How are you guys doing today? Uh, my name is Norman Fong, and this is one of our over 100 episodes of the episode of the podcast. And today, uh, the topic is actually going to kind of repeat, but uh, you know, I, I call this section called War on the Mic. And I did something on the, on the mic before, but I attended one of the symposium for my uh, Pesos are advocate a license. Uh, every every two three years, we gotta go back to take some new courses. So we up to date uh, for my uh, pesticide pesticide applicator license in California. Uh, it is by law that any nursery operate in California gotta have, especially if you are uh, over certain size, you gotta have one staff is has the pesticide applicator. So you know that's good. That's actually is a, is a, a assure you that the nursery you're dealing with is uh, have a professional staff on it, and so one of the courses I took uh, many of you know that is at the Far West uh, Horticulture Trade Show in Portland, Oregon, and you know it's kind of very very uh, refreshing. Uh, I love going back to taking courses. Uh, to learn a lot of the new stuff. And this is actually the very first time I, I seen it at the, a lot of trade show uh, educational courses, specific one hour. We talk about nothing but might. Okay, so because when when we took uh, ultra pop uh, in college in the 80, uh, might is not really that much a problem uh, compared to some other inset like mini bud and scale on ornamental print you know so uh, but the session is also uh, on not just a print ornamental print but also on landscape print so what I'm going to talk to you today is actually going to benefit you uh, forget about what you read on the internet okay everybody have their own opinion okay but take it from me I have my pesticide advocate license and I just learned it from one of the best uh, entomologists from Kansas State. And so the, the, what's up to date is, you know, the, when they start doing and document and doing the research on uh, entom entomology, uh, uh, ultra path, for example, uh, the research from the mic is actually back from the 50s when they start doing the research. And surprising, there the are 200 of the mite species, and that's 200 species. That's that's a lot, and for the world, why? <clears throat> okay, let me take a minute to see. So, out of 200 genus of the the mite, okay, we we talk about all whatever been published document. So, there are all, out of the 200 mite species, there are about a uh, uh, gen uh, genera. I'm sorry, genus or genera. There are about total of over 3,600 species, subspecies that the farmers had to deal with. Whether it's farmers, ornamental, you know, nurserymen, garden, garden center. So, luckily, luckily, there's one about only 10%. 10% is actually affected on the ornamental plant or even food crop. Uh, Right. How many of you have mite problem? How many have you mite problem this year? How many of you do not have mite problem this year? <laughs> okay, so the number one question people always, Norman, how can there's so many uh, mite problem on orchid this year? You know, when, when I took the class and the, the, the room was packed, you know, Eight, 8 o'clock in the morning, and we had to be there by 7.30 to sign in. The room is packed. So we talk about uh, landscaper, garden, cent garden center, people who go outdoor, who do, people who do cut flower, and I'm the only orchid people in there. So luckily, if, if you heard what kind of story they had to deal with, we actually are very lucky. Uh, in orchid, in general, we only deal with Two spider spider mite. Okay, so what happened? We 
all of a sudden this the mic is such a big problem for us. Number one, heat, mic versus compared to minibus. Minibus love something that today's weather, cooler, moisture, mic. Regardless what genus and species, they like warm temperature. Majority of them, majority anyway. Majority of them like warm and dry. Okay. Secondly, the development of the pesticide. There's the new called pesticide called broad spectrum pesticide. Do you know what broad spectrum? Is? If you love bee, if you love honey bee, uh, beneficial insect, please. Do not use broad spectrum pesticide. Broad spectrum pesticide means they kill everything, even the beneficial insect. That including in the natural habitat or what they call the insect community. There are some predator insect that is predator to the mite. So when you apply broad spectrum insecticide, they kill everything, the bad and good. Remember when I talk about this, uh, why I don't use fungicide in my own nursery? Because it kills good and bad. It kills all, even the good pathogen that nature will prohibit or suppress the fungi. Uh, so this is the, one of the major reasons also that all of a sudden from, uh, from 80, the mite is not really is the number one target, but 2022, especially this year, uh, mine is actually the number one pest now. Brush veteran. Not, not just orchid grower, outdoor stuff. You get Malovia nursery have over a thousand acres. Yes, mine is a big problem also everywhere. Florida, yes. If you are in Florida, such as industry. The thirty is uh, pesticide resistant. Okay, the pesticide resistant mean most people say, I read a lot of the comments, oh yeah, just use this one. Uh, uh, you just use one. And guess what? If you take your medicine, remember what doctor tell you, if when you take your antibiotic for your call, make sure you, you finish all of it, right? You don't want to miss your dosage. Otherwise, you might kill it. You do, you, we do have problem with bacterial resistant problem. Well, guess what, same as insect. So a lot of time, people, st people will say, okay, yeah, just use this one. But one is not enough. For the nursery, a professional nursery that us, we use at least three. And I will mention that later part. So I'm just telling you what caused it. So resistant problem, okay? People risk stuff off the internet. I'll just use this, just do that. Four, the resistance, yeah. Number four is since the 80, we had this, you know, free trade. So now versus in the 50 and 60, we only dealing with the insect or the mite in the United States. But in since the 80, we had this free trade. You know, we now in California, we had this little, tiny little black tiger mosquito we never had that in the 80s. What well, they hear, they have that bonnet, that thing is bite you. When they bite you, you don't feel a thing until they, until they, they bite you, suck your blood, and they just itch it. It's not a problem. Of, yeah. So we, that's the problem of the global industry. We have insect now. And remember, we had there's 400 genus of mite and total of 3,600 species of the mite. Yes, the global entry. It, it is all coming in. So that's why there are more of it. So I want you to think about, but my luckily, after the talk, I feel better. You know why? Because we only deal with one or two you know, this, of the mic versus the, if you are uh, a container grower. Whew, I don't want their job, especially if they are pesticide. Applicator, uh, uh, they, you know, in California, when we, every time we spray something, uh, we had a report to the state. Even just a little, a little as bridge. So 
there are some, for example, my good friend uh, in Southern California, it's an Armstrong retail nursery chain. They do have a growing ground. They have one staff full time doing nothing but just submit paperwork and document what, you know, that's what's required by the state. So actually, it, in a very well, it, it's, California is far more highly regulated than the federal. That's why it's a lot of time per merchandise from California or nursery uh, is actually better, safer than some of the least regulated state, for example. Now, the a lot of this, I'm going to show you. I just w walk outside, and how do well, then, then the next question is, <clears throat> how do they get in to our collection? How do they get in? Well, first of all, do you know how? Let's think about yourself and myself, like might. Okay. Well, this is the kind of, I'm trying to do as much as possible uh, to do this talk. You know, this kind of talk is actually more for PowerPoint because we can really visualize. Because it's hard to imagine how small the mite is. Well, the mite is about 0.2 millimeter. One mn millimeter is one tenth of the one centimeter. So it is about, think about the mite, the size of the mite is about one, one hundred of an inch. Okay. This is why sometimes, a lot of time, by the time the mic become a problem, it is too late. It's, it's there, it's, it's there or damage has been done already. So how do they come into our collection, whether it's outdoor or indoor? Because they've been so small. Number one is transportation, especially for the two spider spider mite. Okay, these are three victims. I just get them out of the trash can earlier. With my staff, when we see something really bad and we don't want to, to spend time with it, uh, easy to subtract them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but this is actually, we, we, we tell our staff to save it since last week for next week's lecture. And tomorrow, Sunday, is with our spring, uh, our pesticide, uh, I also to have a pesticide. Uh, applicator to do it for me, but I write a formulation. I want that doctor write a formulation because a lot of the, the pesticide applicator, they, they, I love their machine. They have big, nice machine, 100 gallon, and they can do the job of 20 greenhouses in, the, in about three hours. Uh, but they do, they are not, they do not, not understand orchid. They do, they, they know their outdoor stuff, the tree and shrub. So, <clears throat> No, this is very hard to do. I'm trying to do this in 30 minutes. And Jeff, uh, if you are a member of the Fail Fanatic, uh, Jeff is working on a, a month for membership benefit. And he want me, I, I will talk about this, this insect in, in, in more, even more concentrate on the mic at the Fail Fanatic uh, membership program. Uh, when we get together, I can show you on the PowerPoint. And <clears throat> How to get here? So number one is by air, because it's so small. Yes, it's by air. Jeff, can you show this? This is the the pad, okay? And in the winter time, in the summer time, the water go through here. Hot air dry out, come here. So a lot of the insect, the mite, it pour in by air, because they're sucking to the greenhouse by the fan, okay? Those. So number one is actually it's air. You'd be surprised, it's by air. And that's how they get into your, your uh, indoor house plant. Okay, and um, number two is from your landscaper, landscaping plant. And this is why when I take picture of my greenhouse, people always say, Norman, how come you didn't beautify your, your, your greenhouse? You know, you know, but a true orchid greenhouse or any greenhouse, they do not plant any shrub, hedges, by the greenhouse, or even outside behind it, Be just for that reason. Because all those shrubs are become a host, whether it's pest or disease. So if you have a greenhouse <clears throat> where you're sucking the air into your swamp cooler, make sure 
the area around the strong quarter, the no wheat. There's no some people actually planted boxwood shrub to hide it. No, you actually that's a disaster. Okay, make some wood panel if you want to hide it. Uh, third, the weed. Okay, the weed. That's why we always constant in the greenhouse. We pull in the weed off the uh, either under the bench or on the plant. Okay. Uh, for one, human, us, we brought it in by hand. Okay, we touch something, we touch something. Okay, we were doing out, you were doing the outside, you're doing your roses, you're doing your impatient, you cut them. If you forget to wash your hand, you never know how much germ you have on your hand. And if you look under, <coughs> the microscope or the mic, okay? If you see any, the mic and under the foliage or the, let's say, phenomenopsis, most of the damage, if the damaged tongue is all kind of yellowish, sometimes silver, but if you see some kind of orange spot, that's where the eggs is. A lot of eggs are, are orange. So if you wipe it, okay, you wipe it, that could be a population of this 100 eggs there. Each female, each female <clears throat> can produce 80 eggs in a month. Okay, and, and this is something really fun that I've never known that before. About the sex of the mite. Fascinating. Really fascinating. You do not need, you almost have like sexual property. Uh, the, the, you don't need to have a female mic and and mic and male mic together. The mic is actually doing their job under the foliage, under the sperm. Uh, I'm, I know everybody all oh, ever eighteen. Okay, forget my language. The as long as the female is nearby, the deposit of the male sperm sac, bingo, they fertilize. So the male is like a playboy. They just do their, when they feel like it, they put their uh, sperm back everywhere, everywhere under the leaf, mostly under the leaf. Okay. How are we doing so far? Did that get your attention? Everybody woke up. Everybody woke up, back eh? When the stacks in, <laughs> involved. Okay, so let's reduce. And what's the difference between two spotted spider mites and that attack orchid? Like this, for example. Okay, there's a major difference between spider mite and the two spotted spider mite. Anybody can tell me the difference? Anybody? Okay. Jeff, can you see this? Mm -hmm. The regular spider mite had web. You see this web here? <clears throat> no, but we'll pretend we can. Pretty, okay, pretty, pretty small. How about here? There's some web. Okay, think about that. There's a web here. Oh, there's a bit of web right here. Okay. Well, we do a better job on the PowerPoint, okay? Yes, we can see that. Okay. The two spider spider mite on orchid, they do not have web. Okay, so this is very critical. This is very good information. So think about you us as a mite. Okay. Might do not like hot and dry. Okay, that right now, I'm sorry, we have a record over 100 degree eight days. And I have a lot of orchid outdoor. And this is when I can tell you that, hey, which one would be really heat tolerance? Heat tolerance. Uh, let's see. At the regular two spot spine mine, they do not have web. So the only way they can transfer from plant to plant, guess what? Is either we touch it, when we touch a plant. This is why we go to the, this is why people say, oh, how come normally you don't open the back of a greenhouse where the stop plant, the preserve of the plant? I'm sorry. It, it's getting the sense that it's the same you should before. They are most, if you are a, a smart nursery, their publication house, 
should be only luck. I know Jamie always get in for some reason, but I make her to, you got to watch a uh, good practice. Hey, until today, thanks to the podcast, I'm very, uh, and I also do tissue culture uh, in a sterile condition before. When I think of about doing a plant tissue culture or any, you do, if you do animal tissue culture, is always wash your hand, wash your hand. I'm, until today, knock on wood, I'm still have uh, Mr. COVID virus free. One of the credit points is, is washing hand and wipe everything up. I think Jamie uh, was a locksmith in a prior life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, possible. And so by touching the hand, okay, and by the way, but you can you can transmit virus that way also because virus is a protein. So if you are a smoker, that's why we say, if you're a smoker, sorry, you cannot come into the greenhouse. A smoker, your hand always have I can guarantee that you all are going to, your hand carry the tobacco mosaic virus. Even no matter how you wash it, it's there, it's your skin. Okay, so this is how serious, but the, the virus is a totally different topic. Uh, we will talk about it later. Uh, how are we doing? Am I jumping too fast? I'm trying to, I'm trying to consolidate everything, uh, but I'll get to the point. What about this so-called mic site? that is claimed to be system, systematic. Is it, and that sounds right? Okay, what I have learned from this lecture is, guess what? There is no true systematic type. The only way to get rid of mite is killed by contact. Lucky like word, and you know why? And I will do a better job to explain it because the way the mite attack. I'm going to show you an example of this is a really, and I'm going to show this one away. After the, the podcast, I got this out the trash can. Okay, you see it here? I'm going to use this. This is the mite infection, this area. And they usually start from the edge. Okay. The only thing, uh, only thing about the mite, even if you have the mite side, okay. So if this is a, if it, this is a valuable plant, I would turn this over. So that way, the only way is mite is very very clever. Hey, it's part of the survival. They hide underneath the foliage. They always hide, the two spider spider mite always hide under the foliage, okay. And they usually don't show it until look at how he the healthy one. It's nice and green, okay. They attack a lot on novelty because novelty is the way they grow. It's very close together, so it's very difficult to spray them, okay. So this, I actually, if I look at under that sort of microscope, this one here, there is no live one anymore. But the trouble is, it's not saleable print. So we have to trash it. Unfortunately, this is one of the selective ones before. Okay, so this is why a lot of the, the older plants, the, 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 they have more trouble. But once the, once the damage is done, it's almost like a, a scar. It's a permanent damage. Okay, but they always start from the side. Okay, so this is from the greenhouse. That is, is so one way to prevent all about the the, <clears throat> the mic is also no matter the time I like to use, get close and personal with your orchid. When you water your plant or under the light, hey, look under the foliage. If they have any sign of they usually start from the edge. Okay? And <clears throat> after this lecture there's two bottles you should need to have. One is the regular water spray bottle, and I'm gonna use a, a, a very good industrial strong, because I'm gonna pour <coughs> uh, minimum, at least 70% to 71% uh, rubbing alcohol. Do not use 91. 91 is gonna, gonna dry out your leaf and your skin too much. Uh, minimum, 70 
Okay, and 75 is better. Okay, remember when we talk about the mic? They hate moisture. And mic do not have web. So the only way they can uh, transplant is also the water. And if you have, that's just why uh, we do not like to have overhead water system because overhead water is also helping if any mic young adult go to from print to print. Same thing with the with the fungi also. But at the same token, if you have a mite infection, a small one, if you just a small infection, okay. Even even though it's dead, just keep spraying the leaf in the summertime. If you live in Arizona or like here, or even Florida. You know, Jeanette says she have my problem for her, she's in Florida. Well, this is why you get a, it invest a very good sprayer. Okay, up. Oh. Okay, this one's fine. Make sure the regular mite, if you think you're gonna have a problem, regular mite hate moisture. And it's okay. If you're living in a very dry environment or you go under light, mix them. Secondly, another thing is another tool that you can do that I, I like and I practice even before for for, <coughs> for other stuff is for you to wipe up the, the your hand. Mike, what happened and you say, well, is water gonna work? Guess what? Water might not kill mite, but it really do a, a damage to the body, the water. Okay, so this, this is why I just told, I told my gardener, any of boxwood, that this is the damage mark from the mite, the regular spider mite, because they have web. <clears throat> and the, that kind of uh, spider mite have web. They build, they build the web from branches to branches to branches. Okay, two spider, spider mite on orchid do not have wet, but they do by because we talk because the leaf. Uh, the, that's why remember we talk about not to put your orchid too close. The leaf and the leaf touch touch each other. Okay, uh, so if you have a landscaping plant with the uh, spider mite wet, and if you have insect, you have dog. The easiest way is use a horse, brush it on your shrub, tree, or your uh, roses, for example. That is good. Actually, do a really damage to the body, and they they don't come back. The only thing that you cannot kill is the eggs. So this is the, the there's not much difference between the mite from the fifty to today. It's just the, the different chemical that had to be built up to be stronger and stronger. So they all start with eggs and then mold to a, a, a little a method and then a thaw. So only very simple. Eggs, you cannot kill eggs. Nothing can penetrate eggs. This is me, same thing we mean about too. So think about that as, as mite now, okay? The second stage is that baby stage. Those are the easiest ones. Oh, this are, they're very, very sensitive. You spray water on them, they might not able, their defense system, the immune system, you're gonna kill at least half of them. They might not more into the next phase, the adult phase, okay? Remember, every female adult can lay 80 eggs in a month, okay? Wow. And they do, they do not have a sex partner. Or they, all they need just have a, present of any of the male sperm sac and they, the egg uh, fertilized. It's scary. <laughs> anyway, uh, so now if, so this is the perfect example because the, this is pick up from the trash can. So I'm gonna put up on the trash, but when you do it, when you trash the plant, do not put it in the uh, just a typical trash can. Put it in the seal bag, seal, and put it in the sun. 
that's time we killed it. Okay. Uh, another thing about early detection is to do this. This is two perfect example. At first, I thought, oh no, I might have my infection. Okay, this one. These two are the perfect example of the just a physiology problem. Because this is the the one have been really overgrown but I haven't had a chance to repair. So I check under the foliage. Yes, even though it's yellow, but there is no mite population here. So this is just what I call the physiology effect. So all you have to do, I, I will just, just pinch them off. So that way you don't have that extra tissue that might collect water. And then this will be a target of a good candidate. I mean, you should take a uh, chance to put it ruin overgrown. So uh, this is the one I will put it, set them aside and to repot. Yes, you can repot them still when they still has flower spike. Uh, if I don't repot this year, you see that the root is all decaying and the plant will become more weak. Okay, the mite will thrive and really fast on the plant are more weak. Okay, so this is one I'm gonna put aside for repotting. Monday for my staff. How about this one here? Because on the top, it looks like it has this cracking, the, the yellow damage. But if you always look under the foliage, there is no mic here. So this is just another uh, physiology possible. I What I think is possible is prank probably got too dry at one point. They got really dry. <clears throat> And then we water it again, and or possible of did not get leaching or not because this is a species. This is the Phalaenopsis uh, in Motosta type. Okay, Motosta are very very sensitive root system. They hate to get too dry, uh, or they can all soap build up. Okay, so this is the, the problem. No, I know the root system is fine. Do not need to repair. All. I have to do is just to cut off this yellow area because this is a, uh, the plant, this is physiology response. The plant cannot talk to you, but they show to you say, hey, I'm not happy. Something you did before, okay? So I, judging this, I will tell, this is what happened is probably got too dry. When it's too dry, the salt build up inside the media, the moss. And then the, then they hate salt. They bear a lot of species, especially the thin of the leaf. They're very sensitive to soap build up in the potting media. I don't care whether it's moss or bark. Okay, so all you have to do is just get a clean razor blade and cut them off and then and separate them. Yes. <clears throat> so Sonny has a good question. Yes. He's asking, do mites attack roots or just the foliage? Okay, that's good. Who, who asked that? Sonny. Sonny, good. That, that's a good question, Sonny, and I'm, I'm glad you asked that because I'll almost get into that. Sorry, it's really, it, even though it's hot, it's not as sunny today, but it's like 80% humidity. So it's I'm crazy. sweating here. It's crazy. It's good for orchid, but Mike hated it. We do too. Mike hated it, but many but many but love it. <laughs> Feels like Florida in here today. Yes. Yeah, Sonny, that's a very good question. The re that's a, that's that, that lead me to the next thing I want to talk about. Why there is not really a systematic uh, mite site, de despite how they claim they are. Because, because remember, there are 200 genus of mite. They might have text tested on one mite, but are they the mite that attack our orchid? No. Most of them, so there's a lot of this, this is, this is true. I can I can get a direct quote uh, from Kansas State uh, Entomology Department, despite what they claim. So you have, or when you spray your any of your uh, pesticide or mite side, the only way you to do it is hit it under the leaf, or best way to turn over, you know, turn over, and hit it under the leaf. So this is why if you, if you suspect you have a mite infection, 
First of all, get an RU collection, separate it. Go to your isolation room. If you have a terrarium, you know, I just bought a jar of terrarium, big size. Put it inside. After you spray fungus side, of, after you spray uh, mite side on them, put it in there and put a, a lip on them. Guess what? It's going to be 80% humidity. It will suffocate that little stinker, okay? <laughs> they are. This is why it's called war on mite, okay? They, we had to be outsmarted. Okay, so now we know what they like. So, and what they do not like. So we just do our game on that. So it's actually, if we know what's going on, and the second thing is, you have to be, you have to be persistent, okay? The life cycle of mite from eggs to adult is about seven to 10 days at 80 degree or 85. How do they know that? Because, you know, if you go to the lab uh, in the college, they have this incubator room, right? Incubator room, they can see the daylight, temperature, and they, that's how they get the data because everything in there is consistent. 85 degree, consistent day and night, or they can set day and, and night temperature. So when it's 100 degree, they're gonna be seven days or less, just one cycle, it's scary. One female, 80 eggs every seventh day. And, and last week, probably only four days. So when you have a mite infestation problem, you need to do it three times. Every seven day, every week, okay? Every week, I don't care. Every week. Even if you don't see them, you and, need to repeat. Yeah, because it's so small. By the time they show it to you, the, it's the damage. A lot of times it's too late because it might <clears throat> attack on the plant. Very different than the mini bug. Mini bug, the reason a lot of systematic uh, fungicide, uh, the mice side work on mini bug because mini bug <clears throat> feet and their the teeth penetrate into the inside the tissue or the aphid. <coughs> Inside, inside the tissue where the, the zyan flow and transport the water. And this is why we do, this is much better to do it where I do not have a, a ball or a PowerPoint. The mite do it on the epidemic. The, the, just like the, the beauty is on the skin deep. Yes, they only attack on the skin deep. So the systematic Pesticide only had, had to be absorbed by the, the epidemic inside the tissue. That's why they would never work on the mic, because the mic only attack on the epidemic. And this is why the damage on the mic infection is so fast, because think about how bird, the leaf, the epidemic of the, the orchid or any plant is very, very small, even about half, half a millimeter. So when they are sucking all the juice out of the plant, that's why you see this spotting. This is a perfect example. Overnight, you see this yellow because they, they're sucking all the juice. They're the, <clears throat> they're the vampire of the orchid, or, or the insect. Two, three days, just like that. It's very hot, so, all right, see that? Okay. This is development, and it can be two, two days, three days later. Oh, this is a perfect example. This plant, the egg is live. It's live. <clears throat> There's a lot of light. You see this? I don't know if you can see the orange spot. I'm going to take a photograph after this for my talk. There's a lot of eggs. Orange spot. These are live. These are live mic here. Okay, they are very active. and Okay. And it was so bad. Well, they're having a bowl here, it's so the juicy here. They even, for all the way up to the, the frost by here, you see here? See this orange here, okay? Or is it where it's trash them? And I'm gonna spray it with my alcohol bottle. And where is that? Yeah, this is what we always use in, in the, uh, always have this alcohol spray bottle. Even, even you outside in the garden, because al alcohol will kill the germ. The best way. <clears throat> That's why a lot of the wiping, uh, I love correct disinfect because they have, they have uh, 
they will not kill virus, prevent virus, but they will do a good job. They so also have asking, alcohol. Do you spray with the alcohol after you mist with the water? Yeah, well, mixing the water is sort of a daily job. If, if you don't have time for your pet in between, I don't have time to do a uh, uh, pesticide. Okay, spray. You can even spray it two, three times a day. As long as you don't have, uh, if you don't uh, cause any rotting problem, uh, rotting problem. That's why the air movement is important. And then when do you use the alcohol? Alcohol, alcohol, I do at least once a day. Okay. In addition to your uh, pesticide or maxide. But I use alcohol. I have my own push car uh, tool. This is one of the tools I use. Because when I touch, I just touch the plant, have uh, my infection. You know, I could be pick up some of the fungus spore also. So this is why when we do tissue culture or if you do animal tissue culture, when we do the, we had to be sterile inside the hook to do the frasking, for example. Otherwise, any other germ in our hand. And that alcohol is the number one evaporate. It will kill any uh, of the organism. Mite would not remember, you forgot. Mite do not like dry, do not like wet. They like hot and dry. And guess where the root is? Wet all the time. Okay? So another thing I to go some what you can also get some tummy print. That insect, the mite love them. And one of the, the print I love the use is calcium. <laughs> Remember calcium? Calcium. You know, if you spray them, if, well, even you spray them, they always gonna get mite. Okay. And but calcium is fine because they go, they gonna they gonna dry out anyway. They are gonna leave gonna drop. But I this is a dummy plant. <clears throat> Put, if you have a small greenhouse, you can put, if you have calcium, great. Helping the cut down the population, the potential mite. They're gonna go after the calcium because the leaf is nice and soft and leaf. Okay, and the calcium, when you hand them up, uh, for example, they, they, when they dry out, we are gonna cut down the water. Okay, this are, the, the mite is all dead, but the, the leaf you can draw off. So uh, or you can use uh, calcium as, as a, a bait for mite in your collection. You can also use some other, uh, some people use African violet. Okay, Af African violet is, a, is a all uh, uh, New Guinea patient. They love that. They love New Guinea patient because it's juicy and, and soft. You notice that mite that never bother calaria? It's hard to chew on it, right? is very hard. So now, now, now you know what the mic is, how they transplant, how they transport into your collection. Yes, even if you leave Florida, fresh or hard, you can just leave it, take it outside. It's any person humanity. The mic just say, and then just spray them with water. And this is enough. Okay, it's indoor. Right now, if you live in New Jersey or Northeast, this is probably the time you stop bringing all your orchid indoor now, right? Kerry, uh, Bushman, I know. So this is a good practice. Stop before you put bring in the plant. Get, get close and personal with your orchid now. Okay, inspect them. Look under the foliage. Calaria, take out the suitable. Make sure there's no in, there's no mini, there's no scale high inside. Okay, and every plant before you bring them in. Guess what? This is your best tool. Alcohol. Spray top and bottom of alcohol. Don't worry. It's only 70%, 70%. Do not use. That's why you never use 91%. 91% is really good, too dry. 70 to 75 max. It's going to it's ask you to disinfect the plant. Your plant will appreciate you and they're going to be lit. You, know, you don't have to bring in any insect, potential insect, into your uh, house. <clears throat> Okay, how are we doing so far? 
I think now is to try to think about you as a mic and what the mic like. And then you do it that way. Now, many of you know I do not like to uh, recommend pesticide or anything, the chemical, because we had customers brought from everywhere in the country and depending on how we use, some people don't even use, a, uh, <laughs> don't even read the label. And then I don't want to wake up brand now or soup. Uh, my, my, that's my, my lawyer would say. Okay, so always ask for our form, our membership in our form is safe because everybody will be educated, educated and you know where you live. Ask people around your area, not go to the internet because you might kind of end up on Sweden, Africa, and everybody do different stuff. Their environment is different. Try to ask your peer join the local orchid club, okay? Ask every local club have a really good, very good experience grower. Or if the last row, if, if you don't have orchid club in the area, no mentor, you can PM me, okay? That's the last row. But the, the one thing about all different, I'm not recommend any of this chemical here, but for indoor, I think some of the, <coughs> there's a soap, there's a, it, there's a lot of different stuff, but please read the label. A lot of people, you want to read the label. What you're looking for is what we call active ingredient. Okay, not by the trade name, the brand name. Okay, you might use in, so remember I told, told you about, you need three different ones. Tool. Alcohol can be considered as one of the tool. <clears throat> soap, any other insecticide of soap is good. Uh, neem oil is natural, but we, I do not use, we do not use neem oil right now because it's what too hot. Okay, but if you are in the northeast, you you can actually uh, neem oil is is something I would personally recommend because it's natural. And you can spray all your in, uh, all your orchid outdoor before you move it inside, because your area, you, northeast or northwest, uh, if the temperature is below 85, neem oil or a good horticultural oil is very good. Okay, uh, so always look for the ingredient. You might say, "Oh, I've been using the two brand," but if you look at the ingredient, they might be the same active ingredient. The key word is active ingredient because when I get my medicine for a call, I'm just still recovering from a call. The first thing I look at is the, not the brand. Okay, it's the brand is marketing. I look at what is the active ingredient and the percentage. Okay, uh, you don't want it too high or do you want it too, 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 too low? And always test it on a couple, couple of your plan first. Well, so, if you just have one item, insecticide for mic, uh, do yourself a favor, get a get couple more alcohol, you can also add the horticultural oil, uh, mic site, uh, and maybe a couple other mic site rotation. So because if you tested on one plant, how long would you wait? to make sure that it's safe. One you month. don't just wait. One month. You wait a month in testing before you try it on other plants? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you need to do this ahead of time, not after you have yeah. an but uh, A lot of time people are always re reactive. Remember I was talk about, let's all use Fison. Is that spice, is, which, which is not that Fison is gonna prevent you, uh, it's cut down the pathogen. You know, it's, if you're in the medicine field, my insurance company, insurance company love preventative medicine now. It's cheaper for them to make sure you're healthier before they try to spend a lot of money on the drug, on the designer drug, even with hospitalization. Okay, but we do the same thing on our orchid. So if I'm growing, <coughs> I need to get, I need to figure out ahead of time two or three different things I want to use, alcohol and a couple other chemicals. <coughs> Check the active ingredients. Yeah try it on a plant, wait a month, try it, another one on a plant, wait a month, make sure that this is in my arsenal so when I get an infection, 
I know I'm going to grab these couple of things and yeah. I'm going to be okay in my collection to use Right. Them. And also the other thing about the mic is make sure they are dirty water before you spray anything. Remember, we go through this on the fungicide and pesticide. Or any, when you spray any chemical on your plant, I don't care even if it's horticulture oil or neem oil, for example, they're natural. But if the plant are dry, they're thirsty, they can be what we call pesticide overdose or pesticide. Yeah, because they're, gonna, they're so thirsty, the polymedia is so dry. They're gonna absorb everything. See, water them a day ahead of time. Yes. See, all these previous, if you are new with us, some of the previous uh, podcasts, we did mention that. I've, I've always, watched you do that with all your plants. Well, I always, sorry, it's my, but I always water the day before water. And then uh, if you're new with us, I don't care what the chemicals say. Never 10 mix, never put two medicine together. I wouldn't do that to my body. Would you, would you want to do that for your orchid? That's how you get pesticide uh, overdose or pesticide damage on your plant, okay? And I think that, that hopefully we can put the mic to bed. Uh, it's all about evaluation. Uh, this plant, for example. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm, it's, it's all dead, okay? And my pesticide guy is coming tomorrow. It's all, it's all, the plant are stressed, but I want to save the plant. So it's actually, so make sure when you spray them, always spray under the foliage, okay? And then what happened, the, the, when they are, they are, the mic actually cause, this is a very light infection, only a couple spots here. So instead of dumping the plant, I can save the plant. The plant actually uh, is not in the best condition because they were hot and dry. Where the, the greenhouse located was really dry. So the plant are under stress. So they, they are more su subjected to the mite infection. And, and, but it's under control. So what do I do with this plant? I'm going to, tomorrow, when I, I'm going to lay this one down and do it like this. Lay it that tell my pastor's car advocated, hey, this is an extra one. So I always put it, the one I want to say, I want to make more attention, they did down like they, they down like this. So he know he need to hit the spot. So this is the only way, if, it, if this is a pesticide, you can get garbage underneath. And as soon as the leaf have new growth coming up, then I will repot it. Right now, the plant is stressed because they have mite whatsoever and under the really bright light, so they, they do not, the worst thing you want to do right now is to repot them. Okay, so just do it. Set it aside, put it into your hospital area on them. And I think I'm covered everything already. Okay, so remember, mite are very small. They're very smart. They, they, uh, they can't, they keep evolving themselves and they, we the <clears throat> So mite is something that probably everybody's going to experience one everybody. time or another, right? So everybody. you need to be prepared ahead of time. Yes. Well, don't, don't wait till you have it. Get prepared ahead of time because if you grow long enough, eventually you're going to get hit with mites. Yeah. If you, especially if you go inside or even in the greenhouse, because sometimes the greenhouse, we, I'm talking for myself in California or West Coast, it's so dry. Okay, I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna trash this, I'm gonna take it, and when I trash this, we're gonna take them out of greenhouse, put it in your bag, out of your house. And then after you dump it, wash your hand. And it seems like it's real weather dependent too, because you might not have mites for several years, then all of a sudden, you go through a, a Well, remember I start, I start to talk about the insect and mite in May. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we talk about the uh, uh, fungicide and, and uh, disease preventative. You know, all, we always get more problems with rotting, unfair enough, in the middle of summer, right? So you, I, for, for myself, we have a record of how many plants we dump the disease. So you have data. It's all about the data. So we know 
what is the insect and pest pick in our area. So you should do that too, okay? You should do that too. Uh, I'm, a lot of people have a database for how many plants they have, okay? And, and sometimes they have a, uh, have a, a tray of the plant dye. I don't think we want to be reminded why we kill them. Well, or what and, disease uh, well, got them. We data. just want to move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> what do you want to say? Well, what's the cause of the death? <laughs> okay. We don't want an autopsy. We just want to replace it. <laughs> one of my one of my mentor in Orchid, uh, Irene Garrison. She's a uh, uh, she deal with human disease. She's a pathologist, so it's fun to talk to her about diseases or human diseases. And so this is all about the data, okay? So the, you, you collect those, those data, but usually, you know, on the mic, you know, it can be hot and dry. Guess what? You start spray your mic side at least one month before. So everybody's weather is different. I'm not gonna, we cannot be generalized. This is why it's dangerous. It's very dangerous to ask for opinion over the internet. You don't know what the answer is. Where, where, the, where he come from? Where he live? Did he go outside? Did he go inside? Oh, he's maybe a beginner. <laughs> Let's just show off. Okay, so always ask your peer. Uh, in, in this case, we're in our own group here, and uh, he talk to Austin, sometimes sell, send an email. I, I think this session should also post on the YouTube. Okay, uh, you can send it to support at orchid.com. Okay, if you have a question, you cannot just pick up the phone, hey, I, what's I have this problem. Oh, not everybody have a smartphone. Attach a picture, upper leaf and under leaf of body, and that way we can we can help you identify. Okay, so I think this I think this is going to be the last time I will ever talk about the mic this year. Okay, but the most fascinating for me to learn this time this trip is oh my god. You do not have a male and female mic at the same time. Very interesting because I know it, with a mini bug, the, the male fry in the air, right? And it, they, when they find a female, they come down. At least they make an effort. The mic is even worse. All the all if a, if a female at the present of the male sperm sac. Here we go. Like that's why the mic infestation is so rapid and spread out so far okay and this is why hello this do some wiping i i do this wiping because uh it's, they will not kill uh, some of the question before is oh, can it kill the insect no it will cannot kill the virus okay but it's actually good guess what I, if it might have a problem by wiping off this, you probably wiping off some of the the sperm, the male sperm sac. Guess what? Then you reduce it. Okay, 